Welcome back to A20, special relativity. In the last section, we discussed that moving clocks uh, tick differently than those which are at rest. And here I would like to discuss a real life example of this. The muon. The muon is an elementary particle very similar to the electron. Its mass is about 200 times as heavy. Um, the muon was discovered in the 1930s by Anderson and Neddermeyer at Caltech. And uh, it's, it's really one of my favorite particles because they can, they're abundant. They, you, there's many of them in cosmic air showers. Uh, you can study them, you can study their lifetime. You can even calculate their lifetime on a, on a piece, of, piece of paper. So what Anderson and Niedermeyer did is they just basically you know, went outside and discovered a particle which comes from the sky. And <clears throat> so they studied cosmic radiation Muons are produced in cosmic air showers, and we look at one of those uh, a little later. Um, basically, protons hit the upper atmosphere, and in a shower of various particles, muons are being produced. And then those muons, they're not stable particles, but they are stable enough to reach us. Um, on average, if you hold out your hand right now, about one muon uh, travels through your hand every second. How, does, how is this possible? So if you look at this muon, give you a little bit of particle physics explanation here. Again, the muon is not a stable particle, they decay, and they decay via the weak interaction. For those who are interested, uh, this is the Feynman diagram for this decay. The muon couples to the W, and as a result of the decay, you find an electron, an anti-electron neutrino, and the muon neutrino. The lifetime is about 2.2 microseconds. 2.2 times 10 to the minus six seconds. And I just taught 8701, which is uh, introductory class into particle and nuclear physics. And the students calculated the lifetime of a muon in that class. So you can calculate this and you need a few tools, but it's not that hard after all. The average velocity of the muons when they're being produced is close to the speed of light or 0.998 times the speed of light. And if you do a classical calculation and you want to figure out how long do the muons on average live, uh, fly, you find that this is about 660 meters. Now they are produced in the upper atmosphere and nevertheless we can find them uh, down here on Earth. So something is not quite right. What is not quite right you can already assume is that the clock in the muon uh, as observed by us uh, ticks much much slower than this, than uh, for the muon at rest. And so the lifetime of the muon of 2.2 microseconds is basically extended. Um, if we calculate this, with this, this average velocity, we find a gamma factor of 15 using the equations we this, you know, for time dilation, you just simply multiply 15 times 2.2 microseconds and you find that muons indeed reach our hand on the surface of, of Earth. All right, this is a, is a really fun example. Again, you can study uh, those cosmic air showers with muons um, and, and learn about the muons in very simple experiments. This picture here shows you one of those air shower formations. So the story is a little bit more complex as I explained. This is a spectacular air shower or a, a picture of one where you have an proton coming in with an energy of 10 to the 15 electron volt. And so even at slower, lower energies, showers look like the one here. You produce, in collision with, uh, with, the, with the atmosphere, uh, many, many particles, pions, protons, additional protons, neutrons, and pions again. And those pions then, they decay into muons. And this all happens uh, in the upper atmosphere, but also in some places further down. So here we have seen now an example, which we can actually see and observe in nature where particles travel with high speed and there is relativistic effects we can measure and observe. 